الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Today is the 14th of Jumada Thani 1433 which corresponds to the 5th of May 2012 It's a Saturday evening We are at the Mushrifa Da'wa Center and we had been going or we have been going over the Aqid al wasiti of Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah alayhi rahmatullah we stopped in our uh, discussion last week on some of the qualities of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah pertaining to their adab and their character and their morality and uh, how they invite people to be good in behavior so not only is one expected to do ibadah between him and his Lord, but one is also expected uh, to be kind to the slaves of Allah. And um, we spoke also about the issue of afu, pardoning, and the virtue of pardoning, and that it is not across the board. There are times when pardoning is blameworthy, when you will aid that criminal in continuing in his actions. If you give him the means by pardoning him to do it to other people, it becomes wrong. You know, an employee is stealing, and you catch him stealing, and uh, you know he's been caught before. Say, I let it slide, and when you forgive him, you know he's going to continue to steal. You haven't done anyone a favor. Okay, it becomes mandatory to go and report him, and it becomes haram possibly to pardon him because of that. First time he tells you sorry, I needed money you know, you may work it out. Of course, you have to tell him to put the money back. And you know, you don't report him. It doesn't mean, okay, take the money and enjoy yourself. Not that. You make sure he returns the money, but you don't ruin his life. Because he may have made a mistake. Tayyip, because you're not the wali ul amr for you to be chopping hands. Huh? You know, walk around with a knife. Gotcha! Because some people get excited, man, in some countries, you know, they want to carry out the law by themselves. And you can't do that. Because if that were to be the case, then every day someone will say, Wallah, I caught them fornicating. He has a problem with his neighbor. He doesn't know how to get rid of him. He say, Wallah, I caught him zin doing zina. Stone him to death. Right? Bring the witnesses. No need. I saw him. And he bring three liars like him. They say, we all saw them. Done deal. Then, uh, then there will be chaos. So Islam put it in the hands of the rulers for uh, wisdom. If it doesn't reach them, Allah ma fa'al. It's not your job. Maybe Allah decreed that this person gets away with it. Khalas. We, know, we, know, we should know our limits is what I'm trying to say. Now we stopped at قَوْوَ قَوْلِهِ أَوْ قَوْلِهِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِبِرِّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَذَلِكَ لِعِظَمِ حَقُّهُمَا أَوْ حَقِّهِمَا حَقِّهِمَا actually. وَيَأْمُرُونَ Who are they? يَأْمُرُونَ Is it uh, verb, noun, adjective, adverb? You're translating. Fine. They command. The, the command, is it a verb, a noun? It could be a noun. He gave us an excellent command. It could be a noun. But here, they command is a verb. Taib, we said the wow. Wow for the plurality. And the noon. Okay. Taib. Bibirri walidain. Meaning, يأمرون is of course it's referring the noon is referring to the damir أهل السنة والجماعة. أي ببر فتوى إبراهيم فايز إبراهيم. هاي و هير being being dutiful. نعم بر generally could mean righteousness. Could mean righteousness. Could be piety. ليس البر أن تأتوا مثلا أو كمز البر البر as well مضمومة and مفتوحة and then you know بر is mentioned in in أبرار وتوفنا مع الأبرار إن الأبرار لفي نعيم إلى آخره المهم here بر الوالدين but whatever it comes connected with the والدين it becomes dutifulness to the parents meaning being righteous in the way you deal with them I mean that's what it boils down to as well ببر الوالدين now why did we not say الوالدان First, is it correct to say walidan in the Arabic language? Is there such a thing, such a thing as walidan? Yes. Yeah? No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah? It means to tahib. So you can have it with an alif? Only walidan. No walidan. Forget about the parents now. Arabic language. 
We agree there's walidain. I mean, it's in the book. Could it ever be that you say walidan in the Arabic language? Is it possible that even once in your life you will say walidan, ذهب الوالدان إلى البحر? Allah, anta you give here and you are the voice man. Taking me into a maze. Just give me an answer. So there's walidan. When would it be walidan? Sheikh Abra. Maful bihi. This maful bihi. Here? Yes. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Not uh, this is not marfu bil ali. This is marfu. This is marfu bil ya. Hey. Okay, it's not marfu bil ali if we agree. Had it been marfu, we would have said walidan. Zahab al walidan. Who is the one, the subject of the sentence who did zahab al walidan? Alif. Liman khafa maqam rabbi jannatan. Tayyib, and we have it all over the Quran. Whatever ends with alif noon for the dual, not plural. Here, where is the maf'ul bihi, uh, Captain? Ya'muruna bi birri al walidain. Mudaf ilayh. Al ba harf jar, bir is majroor. Wa mudaf. Huh? Wal walidain mudaf ilayh. Majroor bil ya. Iwadan. An al kasra. Lianahu. Muthanna. Well, you're doing great in the grammar, huh? Tayyib. وَذَلِكَ لِعِظَمِ حَقِّهِمَا This is because of the greatness of their right. From عظيم. Great. يعني the, the vastness or however, whatever word you prefer to use instead of great. ما في مشكلة. Now the Shaykh said in his commentary, رحمه الله, وَلَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لِأَحَدٍ حَقًّا يَلِيَ حَقَّهُ وَحَقَّ رَسُولِهِ إِلَّا لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ Allah did not make for anyone a right, which comes right after his right, and the right of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa except the right of the parents. فَقَالَ وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and enslave yourselves to Him, and associate none in worship with Him, and be dutiful to your parents. Or to parents, be dutiful. بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَحَقُّ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فِي ضمن الْأَمْرِ بِعِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ The right of the Prophet ﷺ here is included in the command of worshipping Allah alone. لِأَنَّهُ لَا تَتَحَقَّكُ الْعِبَادَةَ حَتَّى يَقُومَ بِحَقِّ الرَّسُولِ عَلَيْهِ الصلاة والسلام You will not be able to fulfill or establish this ibadah until you establish the right of the Prophet ﷺ. بِمَحَبَّتِهِ وَاتِبَاعِ سَبِيلِهِ By loving him and following his way. I mean, you're doing the ibadah because he taught you to do the ibadah. You must love him and follow him for you to do the ibadah. Otherwise, you would have not done the ibadah. وَلِهَذَا كَانَ دَاخِلًا فِي قَوْلِهِ وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا That's why it is included already, even if it's not mentioned there explicitly. وَكَيْفَ يُعْبَدُوا اللَّهِ إِلَّا مِن طَرِيقِ الرَّسُولِ عَلَيْهِ الصلاة والسلام. How is it that Allah will be worshipped except through the way of the Prophet ﷺ? Ask this to the Mubtadi'a. Who will still find a way. They'll tell you, yeah, we can do it. We don't need the path of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. Because the tariqa naqshbandiya says that Mawlana, Fulan Fulan, said that you do such and such ibadah. And no, it is not from the Sunnah, but it is okay. I'm just only giving you an example of naqshbandiya. You go any Sufi tariqa. Any tariqah, it is not based on the sunnah. Yeah, it is some homemade stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is ignorance. We're not issue, we're not tripping on, on why they're doing what they're doing. But we're saying is that this is what goes against the sunnah. It's against the sunnah. And so they're trying to get closer to Allah. Now, yes, there are some who are ignorant, but many who are not. It just becomes culture. This is how we are. This is our forefathers. This is our country. Are you kidding me? You expect me to leave all these people and follow you, Wahhabi, you know, a creature who you know you were uh, sponsored by the British, and they come up with all these, you know, uh, homemade politics as well to justify why they don't want to listen to you. Yeah, many of them know, especially their mashayikh. They know exactly what's going on. You should see some of this stuff on YouTube. Oh, you shouldn't see some of this stuff on YouTube, actually. 
So the Sheikh said, وَإِذَا عُبِدَ اللَّهُ or عُبِدَ اللَّهَ Well, usually we don't have a questions during the class, but I will make an exception because it's your first time. Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's okay, go ahead. Uh, you say it's, it's called Wahhabiyya, right? Why is it called Wahhabiyya? No, that, that's not what we say, that's what they say. Uh-huh. They call it Wahhabiyya in reference to Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. Uh-huh. They think that he brought a new kind of Islam. And that all those who follow that mode of Islam, which is Tawheed, 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 be careful of shirk, 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 and be careful of bid'ah, bid'ah, bid'ah. When they see this, these three elements, they identify you as a Wahhabi because you're following his mode of Islam. We, those who follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ, we say, I don't know where you got this from, this is nonsense. We're not Wahhabis. We follow the Prophet ﷺ. Now, who revived that sunnah at the time when people were worshipping graves and doing shirk and going away from the sunnah? This man, you know, whom before him many had done the same thing. Imam Ahmad had done it, Imam Malik had done it, and other Imams had done it. We just, you know, every hundred years Allah will send someone that will revive the, the deen of the ummah as it comes in an authentic tradition. So, I mean, this is what they call us. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm quoting them. We don't say, hey, we're happy, brother, how are you? I'm happy to be. It's like, we're not really, you know, we don't care about this stuff. But they call us that name. Maybe you haven't mixed with them enough. Uh, the Sheikh said, وَإِذَا عُبِدَ اللَّهُ عَلْتَبْ Now you have to answer the question, one for one. إِذَا عُبِدَ اللَّهُ or عُبِدَ اللَّهَ We have a, we have a person I asked. Lay. Now when I ask you, nobody answers. And now when I ask someone, everybody answers. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. What do you think? Leish. Since instead of the subject, so you say. What do we call it in Arabic? Do you remember? Do you guys? Okay, now do you guys remember? Yes. What? Na'ifail. That's the only one you remember all the time, mashallah. It's na'ifail. Ah, what? Well, because the fail is mabni li majhul, ubida. As if it's unknown, like the passive voice in English, right? It was said, such and such. It doesn't mention who said it. Okay? But anyways, that's what it is. So it comes marfu'ah. وَإِذَا عُبِدَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مُقْتَضَى شَرِيعَةِ الرَّسُولِ عَلَيْهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَقَدْ أُدِّيَ حَقَّهُ So if, the, uh, if Allah Azza wa is worshipped as per the legislation of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام then the person has fulfilled the right of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ثُمَّ يَلِي ذَلِكَ حَقُّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ This is followed right after with the rights of the parents فَالْوَالِدَانِ Here's the walidan for you تَعِبَا عَلَى الْوَلَدْ تَعِبَا Notice now how the verb changes well. تَعِبَا is for one person for the dual تَعِبَا with an alif. Both of them got tired. In other words, they went through uh, the, the fatigueness or the fatigue of having to raise a child. Right? حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْن صحيح? And another ayah. Uh, how... Hey, what, how did Allah describe it in the other ayah? There's wahnan ala wahin, and there's one, there's one where Allah gives like two adjectives. <laughs> yeah, Sheikh. Wallah, you're like a genius, Ya Abdul Majid. It's right there, man, in front of us. Hey, wa hamalatu Quran, wa da'atu Quran. Tayyib, so that answers the question. Lwala siyam al um. Huh? فَالْوَالِدَانِ تَعِبَى عَلَى الْوَلَدِ وَلَا سِيَمَ الْأُمْ Specifically, the mother. Why? I'll tell you why. Have you, do you have children? Who has children? Raise your hand. Only two people have children? Three people? Everybody else on vacation? طيب. I'm t- let me give you a classic example. It's a good thing not to have children if you're not married. Well, yes, right, yes. If you're not married, yes. Well, we wanted everything. Let me give you an example. This is factual. Okay, if, you're, if you have children, you will tell me whether you agree or not. You're, you're tired, dead tired. You've been working all day and everything. And so is your wife. She's been working at home, you've been working outside. You go to bed and you just want to rest. Okay, not interested in anything at all. And you have a child sleeping there. Either in the next door room or in the next bed or in the, the same bed, whatever. And the boy starts crying at night. 
You as a man, are you able to open your eyes, see that he's crying, and go back to sleep? Yes. Yes. Turn around, put the pillow and sleep. Can a woman do this? No way. No way. No way on earth. She cannot. If he's crying, she'll, she'll get up and turn on the light and change the whole thing and cook something and bake potatoes and everything. Like, what's going on here? He's just crying. No way. You can easily just say, ah, this guy, man. You know what? I'm going to go sleep in the other room. And you actually get up and sleep in the other room. So you deal with him. That's your business. I'm tired. See, I'm tired too. But you don't have that kind of mentality. Okay? Allah instilled it in women. Didn't put it in us. It's just the way it is. Now some men are oversensitive. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. And he let his wife sleep. And he's the one who does the job. I don't know where they get this men from nowadays. But they're out of stock as far as I know. Right? They ran out in the market many years ago. But just in case you find one, congratulate him on his, mashallah, tabarakallah, kindness and sweetness. So the idea is that the woman really, paid, the mother did a lot uh, more of a better job. I mean, when was the last time you changed the diapers? Right. قال الله تعالى ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه إحسانا حملته أمه كرها ووضعته كرها. And we had enjoined upon a human being being dutiful to his parents. His mother bore him in hardship. And, and difficulty and, and so on and so forth. And she delivered him in the same state. وفي آية أخرى وصينا الإنسان بوالدي حملته أمه وهنا على وهن. Difficulty and fatigueness uh, one over the other. This is just accumulating. Because as the woman, the pregnancy, you know, uh, as it advances towards the delivery, it gets really more difficult. Can't even sleep right, can't even move right, can't even walk in cases. It gets really tough. Don't ask about the actual delivery. You know, which is this, Alhamdulillah, we're men. And you never have to, just the idea itself is traumatizing. Imagine if you were pregnant and you had to deliver a child. Oh, Allah Musta'an. وَالْأُمُّ تَتْعَبُ فِي الْحَمْلِ The mother gets tired during pregnancy. وَعِنْدَ الْوَضْعِ And at the time of delivery. وَبَعْضَ الْوَضْعِ And after delivery. وَتَرْحَمْ صَبِيَّهَا أَشَدْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ الْوَالِدْ لَهَا And she is merciful, she shows more mercy to her son than his father shows. ولهذا كانت أحق بحسن الصحبة والبر حتى من الأب. That's why she has more of a right of being your good, good close companion and dutifulness even more than the father. And you all know the hadith which the Shaykh will quote. قال رجل يا رسول الله من أحق الناس بحسن صحابتي. O Messenger of Allah, who has the most right of, of my good companionship? قال أمك. He said your mother. قال ثم من. He said then who. قال أمك. Twice. قال ثم من. قال أمك. Three times. قال ثم من. في الرابعة. ثم قال في الرابعة. ثم أبوك. Then your father. So three times the mother has the the father's right times three. I'm saying that so you will not think that the father has no right. Huh? You will not say the father, the mother has a right and the father has a quarter of a right. No. The father has a right and multiply that right by three, you get the mother's right. You get the mother's right. So, just so we will be on point. The father also gets tired in dealing with his children. Tired as in he goes through the, the process of, of raising children. Not the physical t- uh, tiredness necessarily. وَيَجَّرُوا بِضَجَرِهِمْ and whenever they're in that, in the state of, of not being in a good mood, he also feels, he, he shares that feeling. When they're not feeling good, you don't feel good. And when they're bored, you feel bored with them. And he is happy when they're happy. And he strives and uh, utilizes all means and, uh, available for their comfort, for their tranquility, and for their good livelihood. He's making all these efforts. That's why you go work. يضرب الفيافي والقفار من أجل تحصيل العيش له لأولاده. يعني he goes, in other words, he strives. Uh, and, and you know, he exhausts himself in working and trying to earn a living in order to uh, provide his children with a, uh, you know, what they live with or what they survive with. Each one of them, mother and the father, have a right. No matter what you do, you will not be able to pay them back. You will not be able to fulfill their right. No matter what you do. 
ولهذا قال الله عز وجل وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا and this, one of the things you have to do is say oh my lord ارحمهما show mercy to both of them like they raised me when I was little فحقهما سابق the right is given precedence حيث ربياك صغيرا حين لا تملك لنفسك نفعا ولا ضرا so they raise you when, I, when you were a baby you could didn't even possess for, you, for yourself any benefit or harm you're a baby if they were to leave you alone you would die فواجبها البر the, 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 the obligation the payback for that is dutifulness والبر فرض عين بالإجماع على كل واحد من الناس and dutifulness is an, is an individual obligation. It's a personal obligation upon every one of the people. وَلِهَذَا قَدَّمَهُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى الْجِهَادِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ That's why the Prophet ﷺ favored it and gave it a, a precedence over the jihad in the cause of Allah, fighting in the cause of Allah. Uh, and usually when you hear jihad fi sabil Allah, the first meaning that comes to mind is fighting that is the original default meaning not linguistically yes jihad is jihad al nafs and you struggle against yourself and whatever and according to the jama'at al tabligh jihad is is khuruj and then you have all these people interpreting the way they want to interpret it according to their environment kind of you know customizing the deen and giving it a little decoration to make the people happy but you know let's be real when you hear jihad fi sabil Allah, don't be thinking about you and your shayateen Okay, not these shayateen at least. The shayateen of ins. That's what the, uh, the, the original default meaning. It could mean other things. You don't go to the other things, then you, you, then you mention it's, that is the first meaning and then anything else in this regard. Now, because the word jihad is, is uh, greater than that. Allah says about the Quran, وَجَاهِدُهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا With the Quran you struggle as well. طيب and uh, other ayat which mention the word والذين جاهدوا فينا for example لنا هديناهم سبولنا so but jihad في سبيل الله don't go elsewhere كما في حديث ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله أي العمل أحب إلى الله لكن حديث ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه who said to the prophet he said oh messenger of Allah which deed is more beloved to Allah? Qala as-salatu ala waqtiha. Allahu Akbar. See how easy that one is? We somehow fail. Praying on time. Huh? On time. As in, as the ulama say, the beginning of time. Hey. Meaning you don't push it to the last five minutes before the time of salah comes out and you squeeze in a few rak'ahs and say you prayed the salah. That is not the most beloved deed to Allah. Ala waqtiha. Not that you can delay dhuhr to al-asr. Uh, because some people want to have their own interpretation. It does not mean that you allow the time of salah to go out. No, Habibi. This is not even an option. Not even an option. It means that you pray early with the jama'ah. Whenever the jama'ah is. Sometimes you are in a remote place like in an istiraha or somewhere where there isn't a masjid. Uh, nearby, you don't hear the adhan, whatever, then the best time is with the jama'ah. The jama'ah may delay the salah. You don't say, I'm Shaykh al-Islam, Allah. As soon as the time comes in, Allahu Akbar. And you pray by yourself. Say, no, now that the best time is that you pray with the jama'ah. Because now there's a reason for you to delay. You don't want to, uh, you know, exclude yourself from the jama'ah and act on, on individually in this fashion. Unless you go into the masjid, Jazakallah khair. Al-Muhim, Qultu thumma ayi. Then what? قَالَ بِرُّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ See, first thing is salah on time. Next thing is dutiful to the parents. Dutifulness to the parents. قُلْتُ ثُمَّ إِقَالَ جِهَادُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Then I said what? Then he said jihad فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ نعم. وَالْوَالِدَانِ هُمَا الْأَبُّ وَالْأُمُّ The, the walidan, technically here, are namely the, the mother, the father and the mother. أَمَّا الْجَدُّ وَالْجَدَّ فَلَهُمَا بِرْ The grandfather and the grandmother they also have a right of dutifulness. لَكِنَّهُ لَا يُسَوِّ بِرَّ الْأُمِّ وَالْأَبْ But it is not equal. It does not equate the dutifulness to the mom and dad. لِأَنَّ الْجَدَّ وَالْجَدَّةَ لَمْ يَحْصُلْ لَهُمَا مَا حَصَلَ الْأُمِّ وَالْأَبِّ مِنَ التَّعْبُ الرِّعَيَةِ وَالْمُلَاحَظَةِ Because naturally the grandparents did not have to go through the process of, of you know, raising the children and going through that difficult time like it was the case with the parents. فَكَانَ بِرُّهُمَا وَاجِبًا مِنْ بَابِ الصِّلَةِ being dutiful 
to them is obligatory as in because it falls under the category of keeping the kinship ties. لكن هما أحق الأقارب بالصلاة. They have the most right of of that sila among the relatives. Among, يعني they have the strongest right of of uh, keeping the kinship ties among the other relatives, the grandparents. أما البر فإنه للأم ولا As for the dutifulness in that ultimate sense belongs to the mom and the dad. لكن ما معنى البر؟ ها the sheikh is gonna give us the definition رحمة الله عليه. He said, البر إيصال الخير بقدر ما تستطيع وكف الشر. Bir means being able to deliver good goodness to the best of your ability and to prevent evil. To be able to deliver goodness, present goodness to the best of your ability and prevent evil. Fantastic. إيصال الخير بالمال you could deliver the goodness with fulus. Right? And that is nowadays probably one of the most important things for the parents. Mind you, the difference between back in the days and now. Back in the days when people didn't have an electric bill, didn't have rent, didn't have a refrigerator, if you had the food for the day, khalas <laughs> man, yours, yours sufficed. People try to, they misunderstand that. They say, brother, you know, I, I'm eating every day, I'm ready to get married. You know, and the Prophet ﷺ said, يَا مَعْشَرَ الشَّبَابِ مَنْ اسْتَطَعَ مِنْكُمْ الْبَأَةَ فَلْيَتَزَوَّجُ Say, brother, you're living in different times, man. You're not living in a tent in the desert, and if you are, barakallah fiqh. You have rent to pay, man. You have electricity bill. You have, you know, car gas, the gas for the car, and so on and so forth. Nowadays, honestly, if you don't have a job wherein you have a salary, some people want to work for da'wah, which we all would love to work for da'wah. Nobody wants to have a, a job and then and, and go through the hassle of the corporate world. You just want to relax. But and so I'm having my own experience and I'm speaking with brothers who want to, you know, they just want to leave everything and become that. Say, forget about school, forget about education, I just want to work for da'wah. Say, brother, that's fantastic. But the truth of the matter is, da'wah organizations can only take you so far. They are charity based. Meaning any day they can say, oops, we're out of money, we're closing down. What are you going to do, man? If you don't have any qualifications, you're going to be selling potatoes. And you cannot pay rent with selling potatoes. Unless this is your يعني, business. You're dealing with vegetables. But I mean on the side of the street. You, you're going to make enough money to buy your falafel sandwich at the end of the day. Not something you can survive with. So therefore, don't be hasty and say, I'm going to leave and go. No, get some degree. huh? As long as you're within the halal. Have some pillow, some cushion to fall on. And then work in the da'wah. La qaddar Allah, it doesn't work out. يعني, you have a backup plan because you're going to have wife and kids. They're not going to understand, their, the people are not going to understand. So we have to be realistic as well. We're living in different times, it requires uh, preparation, you need to be able to pay. Nowadays, for the parents, this is the worst thing in the world. They need a home, they want to own a home. They don't like the rent. Because they feel they're getting old, and Allah qadar Allah, anything happens, they're out in the street. So the most important thing for your parents nowadays is buy them a house. So they say, this is your house. And make sure that they are taken care of financially so they know they are okay. So one of the best ways of bir today could be money. You may not be able to travel, you may not be able to spend time with them, you may not be able to do all these things. But that money to them is like you being there and more. Because you, anyway, you're given a peace of mind which with their age they can't do otherwise. Can't work anymore, they're too old, they're sick all the time, they need doctors, they need yani, these things we have to, as children of our parents, we have to understand what are the priorities. They, they need this kind of security. You put yourself in their shoes, you don't want to be living in a risky situation. إِصَالُ الْخَيْرِ بِالْخِدْمَةِ أي خدمة? They say here, huh? Delivering goodness with service. Your service provided to your parents. How can I help you today? Huh? I'll, it'll be my pleasure to be here, you know, at your service. What would you like? إِصَالُ الْخَيْرِ بِإِدْخَالِ سُرُورِ عَلَيْهِمَا You can uh, deliver goodness by bringing happiness into their lives. Like making them happy with whatever news. Sometimes they're happy with the, you know, little things. Make them happy, share the news with them. مِنْ طَلَاقَةِ الْوَجْهِ Like smiling in their face. <coughs> 
wa husnil maqali wal fi'al and the good uh, statements expressions and actions wa bi kulli ma fihi rahatihima and in everything wherein you can get their comfort you can provide them with peace of mind and comfort you can see how, how much how many shortcomings we have in this regard wa li hadha kana al qawl al rajih wujub this is why the preponderant position is that it's obligatory to serve your mom and your dad. It's obligatory on the children to serve the mom and the dad. <coughs> Provided that this does not inf- afflict harm upon the child. Yani something that will ruin your life and you will lose your job because you're trying to you know, provide him with service, then that's another discussion. فَإِنْ كَانَ عَلَيْهِ ضَرَرٍ لَمْ يَجِبْ عَلَيْهِ خِدْمَتِهِمَا If it's going to harm his well-being, then it is no longer obligatory to serve them in this fashion. اللَّهُمَّ إِلَّا عَنْدَ الضَّرُورَةِ Except at times of necessity. وَلِهَذَا نَقُولْ إِنَّ طَاعَتُهُمَا وَاجِبَةٌ فِيمَا فِيهِ نَفْعٌ لَهُمَا وَلَا ضَرًا عَلَى وَلَدِ فِيهِ So we say, Obeying them is obligatory in that which is beneficial for them, yet is not harmful to the child. The son or the daughter. Huh? Very important. As for that which contains harm. It will cause harm. Be it a religious harm. كَانْ يَأْمُرَاهُ بِتَرْكِ وَاجِبٍ أَوْ فِعْلِ مُحَرَّمٍ Such as them commanding him to abandon an obligation or to commit a, a prohibition. فَإِنَّهُ لَا طَاعَةَ لَهُ مَا فِي ذَلِكَ There's no obedience to them in this regard. Everybody goes his own way. أَوْ كَانَ ضَرَرًا بَدَنِيًا Or if it is a physical harm, فَلَا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ طَاعَتِيمًا He's not obliged to listen to them if they say anything which will harm. Smoke a cigarette. For example, or or do this uh, kind of exercise, or jump from the second floor. I don't know what parents ask their children nowadays, but if it's going to harm him physically, he doesn't have to do it. أَمَّا الْمَالِ فَيَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَبُرَّهُمَا بِبَذْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَثُرٍ As for money, he has to be dutiful to them in spending on them, even if it's a lot. إِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ عَلَيْهِ ضَرَرٍ Provided that it does not harm him. يعني Allah, he sends the money to his parents and then he gets kicked out of his house, his, his apartment, because he can't pay the rent. He's living in the street. And then soon he will fire him from the job. He can no longer send money. It defeats the purpose. So he has to maintain his... Huh? What that does not, that which does not harm him. وَلَمْ تَتَعَلَّقْ بِهِ حَجَتُهُ And it's not something that he needs. It's not something that he needs himself. Now of course, he's, the Shaykh is dealing here with halal and haram. The one who's able to overlook these things and do it fi sabilillah is not going to lose. To say what is obligatory and what is haram. But if you want to go that extra mile, you know, even if there's some harm on you, not detrimental to the extent of destruction, but even if there's some sacrifice, some serious sacrifice on your part, for them to be happy, barakallah fiqh. The shaykh is not discouraging that. He's telling you now where the limits are. But the birr, you can go, I mean, some of the salaf, if you read their stories, man, you, just, you, find, you, you will think we're clowns. Let's just put it in, in, the, in the street language. You'll think you are a clown. One of them, if he were eating with his parents, he would not reach out with his hand to, to the food because he's worried that his mother may have her eyes on that particular thing and he's worried that he will wind up eating the food that his mother wants to eat. So when he sits with his mother, he doesn't eat. Because maybe by his hand, maybe his mother saw this piece of chicken, for example, and she eyed it. She wants it, and so he gets it first. And her mother, his mother, doesn't get the chicken she had wanted, even though he didn't say anything. He doesn't eat. Another one said, "If you told me to describe my father, I won't be able to do so." Why? They said, "I've never looked at him, never looked his father in the face. He always like this in his front of his father." Another one, he said, "I cannot, He cannot." Possibly sleep upstairs while, while uh, his parents are downstairs, so he will not be above them. One of the mashayikh, you would be given a class in a circle. He's a big sheikh. And his mother would call him. Huh? Yeah, Fulan. And the students would see him get up and go, Where do you go? They tell him, Go feed the chicken. He has students, man. He's a sheikh. He's a, he's a sheikh, alim. And his students are learning. She tell him, Go feed the chicken. They go back and say, yeah, Shaykh, you know, what, what's going on here? So he explained to them, this is my mother, man. This is her right. 
and this is with something else, or this is how they used to be. Uh, nowadays we're on some other stuff, man. I don't know what we're on, but it's not very good. على كل حال والأب خاصة له أن يأخذ من مال ولده ما شاء ما لم يضره. The father specifically has the right to take the from the wealth of his son whatever he wants, as long as it's not going to harm the child. Who knows the evidence for that? The Prophet ﷺ said to a person who told him about his father, he said, "Anta wa maluka li abik. You and your money belong to your father. <laughs> you and all of your money are nothing but a property of your father. So what are you talking about him taking your money? So of course, but they say as long as there's no harm. So the father asks for money, you know you have to send it. Mm. Don't be playing games. As long as you're able to afford it, just send the money. Waalaikum salam. Shukran mudir. وإذا تأملنا في أحوال الناس اليوم <coughs> وجدنا كثيرا منهم لا يبر بوالديه. If we reflect on the condition of the people today, we see that many don't treat their parents with dutifulness. بل هو عاق. Rather, he is disobedient. He is undutiful. والعياذ بالله. تجده تجده يحسن إلى أصحابه. You find him is kind to his friends, his buddies. Huh? I'll pay for the dinner. It's on me, man. No, no, I got it. And then when he goes with his parents, he just suddenly doesn't have the money, now they have to pay for the dinner. Trying to save money with his parents, but he pays for his friends. And also is spending time. He can hang out with the buddies for a few hours, no problem. Because they're chit-chatting and having a good time. He's not bored when he sits with his buddies. لكن لو يجلس إلى أبي أمي ساعة من النهار لوجدته متململا. But if he sits with his mom and dad for one hour, you'll see him about to rip his hair. Huh? He's bored to death. كأنما هو على الجمر, as if he's sitting on coal. As if he's burning on some coal. فهذا ليس ببار. This is not a dutiful son. بل البار من ينشرح صدره صدره لأمي وأبي. The true dutiful one is the one whose chest is open for his mom and dad. ويخدمهما على أهداب عينيه. And he يعني services them with his on his eyes. You know, على رأسه وعلى عينه. You know all these expressions. What do you want? Just tell me. ويحرص غاية الحرص على رضاهم على رضاهما بكل ما يستطيع. And he's very keen, super keen, on pleasing them with all that which he is able to do. In fact, our Sheikh Muhammad Muqtar Shankiti, Hafizahullah, he said something even beyond that. He said, real dutifulness is that you don't wait for them to ask. If you really want to be dutiful, don't even put them in a position where they have to tell you a story. You know there's something wrong, act. This is real dutiful. If you really want to get there, you know there's a problem, you, you beat them. Before they tell you, well, we have this and we have that, you get the job done. Now that is real dutiful. It's because them asking you is embarrassing to them. They feel that they are your parents. And you know, they, they don't want to ask of you, but sometimes they are in need. So, uh, you know, being ahead of the game in this sense. And, and really, and giving them the right before they ask. Well, the Sheikh said, وهنا uh, وَكَمَا قَالَتِ الْعَامَّةِ الْبِرُّ أَسْلَافِ uh, And like the uh, common saying goes, الْبِرُّ أَسْلَافِ uh, What is أَسْلَافِ? Plural of Salaf. What is Salaf, طيب? Like borrowing money. you're a businessman, mashallah, tabarakallah. Ayo, but uh, <laughs> that, that may be the last meaning that comes to mind. Sahih, <laughs> Sahih. It could be that actually. He's right. Sulfa huh, is like a, 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 a loan, right? Something that you loan. But also, Salaf is the whatever precedes you. Um, it comes in the Quran in a few ayat actually, right? Illa ma qad Salaf. For example, and other occasions, I cannot recall right. على كل حال فإن البر مع كون يحصل به البار على ثواب عظيم في الآخرة فإنه يجازى بر به في الدنيا. So bir, even though you will get a huge reward on, on in the akhirah, but you will also get the reward for it in the dunya. 
فالبر والعقوق كما يقول العوام أسلاف. This is the point here. Bir and عقوق dutifulness and undutifulness is like alone. See, he got all of us, huh? أقرد تستوفي. Loan and then you will get back. إن قدمت البر بركة أولادك. If you put forth dutifulness, your children will be dutiful to you. وإن قدمت العقوق عقق أولادك. And if you put forth undutifulness, your children will be undutiful. Of course, this is generally. Are there exceptions? Yes. Yes. In all cases, there are exceptions. Otherwise, uh, one will deduce from that that this, some of the prophets were undutiful to their parents. Because their children were undutiful to them. Say, no, no, no. So you don't understand it this fashion. There are exceptions to the rule. You can be wonderful and Allah decrees that you have a son who is off the track. Khalas, this is the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Could be for other sins, for other reasons. But it does not have to be that you were undutiful. But generally, the shaykh is saying what the amma say, what the common people, it's a proverb. There you go, what goes around comes around. وهناك حكايات كثيرة في أن من الناس من بر والديه فيه فبر به أولاده. There are many stories among the people that some people were dutiful to their parents, so the children were dutiful to them. وكذلك العقوق فيه حكايات تدل على أن الإنسان عقه أولاده كما عقه هو أباه. Um, there are stories that you know that some some people their children were undutiful to him the same way he was undutiful to his parents. فأهل السنة والجماعة يأمرون ببر الوالدين. أهل السنة والجماعة they command themselves and others as we said last time to be dutiful to parents. قوله وكذلك يأمرون بصلة الأرحام. Also, or in addition. They command themselves, they enjoin, how about that? They enjoin بِصِلَةِ الْأَرْحَامِ We said that earlier, Sila, you should know because you asked them about it. Sila, relation? Good. الْأَرْحَامِ What is الْأَرْحَامِ actually? Yes. Okay, good, good. Does it come in the Qur'an? يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم الذين خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تدري به والأرحام. How about in other places? Anyways, one is good. If you remember another one, tell us later. طيب. ففرق بين ال ففرق بين الوالدين والأقارب وال وال والأقارب الآخرين. There's a difference now between the parents and other relatives. والأقارب لهم الصلة. What is expected of you in regards to your relatives is صلة. ها؟ Ties. والوالدان لهم البر أو البر عفوا البر. The 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 barley, huh? And the the parents have the right of dutifulness. Well, birru a'la min al-sila. Bir is a'la is is a higher level than. نعم, the ties of kinship. لأن البر كثرة الخير والإحسان. Because bir actually means the abundance of good and excellence. لكن الصلة لا يقطع. However, tie is that you don't cut, you don't disconnect. You don't sever the kinship ties. That's the actual verb they use, severing the kinship ties. Uh, this other than severe, by the way. Uh, don't say severing the kinship ties. You're really not going off the track here. That's what we say for the one who abandons dutifulness. We say he's aq. And we say to the one who doesn't uh, keep the kinship ties, he's a cutter. Is he a cutter? Uh, he's a disconnector. <laughs> he's a severer, severer. طيب. فصلة الأرحام واجبة. Keeping the kinship ties is obligatory. وقطعها سبب لللعنة والحرمان من دخول الجنة والعياذ بالله. And and cutting the kinship ties or severing the kinship ties is a reason for a curse and for deprivation of being uh, permitted to enter paradise. Paradise. قال الله تعالى. 
فهل عسيتم إن توليتم أن تفسدوا في الأرض وتقطعوا أرحامكم أولئك الذين لعنهم الله فأصمهم وأعمى أبصارهم So would you then um, if you turn away that you will cause corruption on the earth and you will suffer the kinship ties it is those whom Allah has cursed فأصمهم He made them deaf وأعمى أبصارهم and He made them blind He blinded them وقال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام لا يدخل الجنة قاطع He shall not enter paradise He will not enter paradise the one who severs the kinship ties أي قاطع رحم والصلة جاءت في القرآن والسنة مطلقة um, and it, it comes in the Quran and the Sunnah uh, وكل ما أتى ولم يحدد بالشرع كالحرز بالعرف أحدد How am I going to translate this poem? I won't وعلى هذا or this verse فيرجع للعرف فيها anyways the matter goes back to عرف what is عرف what is generally accepted among the people provided that is within the boundaries of Islam because someone say well in our place the shirk is okay so خلاص we no habibi that doesn't work this way فما وعلى هذا يرجع للعرف فيها فما سماه الناس صلة فهو صلة whatever the people consider to be Maintaining the kinship ties, then it it, 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 it does the job. Whatever they consider to be uh, severing the kinship ties, we consider it to be severing the kinship ties. This varies now with the variation of the situation, the condition, the time, the locations, and the actual nations. إذا كان الناس في حالة فقر وأنت غني وأقاربك فقراء فصلتهم أن تعطيهم بقدر حالك. In some عرف, for example, if if your uh, if the people are poor, generally the, the people are poor, there's poverty, and you are rich, and your relatives are poor, for them keeping the kinship ties is giving them according to your ability. خلاص. وإذا كان الناس أغنياء, if the people are rich, however, وكلهم في خير, all of them have Good money, خير could mean money usually. وتحبون الخير ولا وتحبون المال حبا جما. The other one, the other one, سورة ال. وإنه لحب الخير لا شديد. نعم خير it means money by the way according to the علماء in this آية. وفيمكن أن الذهاب إليهم في الصباح أو المساء يعطسلا. If everybody's rich, then visiting them in the morning or the evening constitutes keeping the kinship ties. وفي زماننا هذا صلة بين الناس قليلة. In our time, صلة between the people is very يعني seldom uh, وذلك لانشغال الناس في حوائجهم everybody is after looking after his own needs واشتغال بعضهم عن بعض everybody is too busy for everybody else والصلة التامة أن تبحث عن حالهم the real صلة here is to look after the, to fetch for their condition وكيف أولادهم how are the kids doing وترى مشاكلهم and you try to solve their problem you see their problem ولكن مع هذه مع الأسف مفقودة even that unfortunately is is absent, is gone, is lost. كما أن البر التام مفقود عند كثير من الناس. The same way being real dutiful has been absent and gone among the people, so has this been. And inshallah, with that we conclude. Um, in our next uh, week discussion, we'll deal with husnul jiwar, how to be a good neighbor. Alhamdulillah. يهديكم الله ويصلح بالكم and how to treat the yatama. The orphans, the masakin, the travelers, the wayfarers, how to deal with the slave if you own one, um, and things, other qualities and characteristics of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.